Okay, Tularino, it's a little bit of a product review. I uh, have a project I'm working on, and uh, I've got that parlor pistol that needs some wood filler. So I decided to buy a couple different products to try out before I use one. Uh, this uh, plastic wood is uh, interesting. It seems to harden pretty good, um, but I'm not sure that it sticks uh, quite as well as the... Uh, JB Weld quick wood. This stuff is very sticky, and I'm, I feel like this would bond better to something. Uh, and it hardens super hard, if you can hear that. Um, I kind of rolled a little snake out of it and was able to break it in half. Um, but it's uh, very hard, and if you need something structural, this is the way to go. If you need something not quite structural, I wouldn't be afraid to use this as long as you're sure you can get it to stick. Uh, you know, if there's, if there's a way for it to bite and have a good purchase on whatever you're putting this on, then I would be, I would be fine to use this. And this one is stainable and paintable, and this one is not stainable. So there's your your two differences on those products. So as something I needed while I was working on uh, the other project I referenced. I needed a fine soft wire brush. And I was thinking brass and uh, I found these at Lowe's and it is just they are really nice and soft um, both the brass and actually the uh, the steel was also very soft. Not the, you know, This is a little more stiff than the brass but it, it is still very nice if you need a light touch on something. Um, these were in the welding section at uh, Lowe's, and they're only uh, two fifty a piece, so not bad. I had an opportunity to go to the antique store again today, and I found some cool insulators to decorate in the train room. Uh, and there's this solid brown one, which I just hadn't seen one of those before, so I thought that was cool. Uh, but these, uh, there's, these are really neat. I'm not certain, but I think this is like actual wire from when they were in service. And they've got a, a connector here with the wire coming off. Each one has one of those. And uh, this one actually has like a, a connector of the main wire in it. So they need cleaned up, um, but still pretty cool. This one's a, a Whittle Tatum. And this one's an Armstrong. I think they're made about the 50s, late 40s, early 50s, something like that. I know what you're thinking. No, not another flashlight project. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was a, this was, was a bargain. Um, Three dollars. Uh, it says Burgess, made in USA, and you know. It's all there, uh, other than a bulb. There's a spring, and the switch stuff is in there. And it's very simple. I'm a little worried that if I try to polish this chrome on the outside, will it just come off like the reflector on the uh, military flashlight? So I'll have to be super careful with that, test it in a little spot first. Um, and it's got the little screw-in bit here. Has an actual glass lens on the front, but um, I've got uh, LED bulbs coming on the slow boat, and uh, you know that I originally ordered for the other flashlight project. So I think I'm going to try to put those or one of those in this and upgrade this old flashlight to LED. So that'd be a fun little project. Next, I picked this up. Uh, it was two bucks. And I will, honestly, I looked at it and I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. It says uh, RD Arkansas Oil Stone. And uh, I was like, well, uh, I don't know that I really need it, but if I wanted to put a really fine edge on something, a really sharp edge, this is like a super fine sharpening stone. You, you probably can't hear that. <laughs> But it is, uh, it's a natural piece of stone, I think, because it's got a couple little inclusions in it, like a real stone would, but it almost feels like, like a marble. It's so, I don't know. 
uh, and then there's a little paper inside here. Use a thin non-gumming oil like pike oil. So pike oil. Uh, anybody familiar with pike oil? Here, I'll put it here and you guys can pause it and read it if you'd like. All right, next item. I got a Stanley uh, level, torpedo level. It's um, all aluminum, and all the uh, the vials are in there and working. And uh, I think this will polish up really nice. And the recessed areas can get some paint. And uh, someone put their initials in it, but you know that'll be on the back if I display it. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, but the, yeah, that'll make a nice, uh, a nice project. Look at this thing. Oh, this was cool. Genuine manganese bronze slope meter. Hendrick Manufacturing, Carbondale, Pennsylvania, makers of perforated metal screens. Um, so it's an angle finder that you can use to figure out oh, what angle uh, you your application is, I guess. And then down here. It has a table that tells you the angle in degrees and what percent grade that is and how many inches of rise it is for that angle. Let's see if I can get it looking reasonably focused and big enough to read. So how cool is that? It says here pans, troughs, flights, buckets, mine car parts, shaking screens, tank stacks, chutes, mine car buggies, flange lip screens, and light structural work. So I thought that was pretty sweet. Five bucks. All right, the things just keep getting cooler, don't they? <laughs> Wire former, the magical tool of 10,000 uses. <laughs> Bends, straightens, and cuts any wire up to 5 30 seconds diameter. Easy to make pegboard hooks, clamps, brackets, shelf hangers, space savers, chains, mobiles. Complete information and directions in the box. And they give you some neat pictures of things you can make on the side. Lots of pegboard applications. Oh, look. A hook to hold an old manual drill. That probably dates this pretty well. And look, a doggy uh, note holder. <laughs> All right. Oh, another cool thing. I um, hope if Forrest Sundheimer is still alive, he doesn't mind that I'm showing this off. But I imagine he's probably dead by now because this was probably from the 50s, I'm guessing. It's got um, Woodrow Wilson stamps on it, seven cents each stamps. And it costs 14 cents to ship this from Michigan to Canton, Ohio. So, uh, let's see. I haven't really opened this even, so we're gonna see what's in here together. There's a envelope, it looks like. Double check price list and order form. Open me up, you'll learn more yet. Fill me out and we'll guarantee you'll be glad you did. <laughs> oh. They don't put stuff on things like that anymore. Sometimes the old papers are just as cool as the product. Wire formers at $2.98. Or three $1 bills. Bundles. Uh, oh, for wire. Interesting. So they're selling wire. So you can use with the wire former. That's cool. What else we got in here? There's the tool itself. Wire former. Vinca Mulder Manufacturing Company, patent pending, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, so it looks like there's a cutter. And. Uh, it's got a rubberized handle here, still squishy. It bends, it straightens, it cuts into any shape with such little effort. Invaluable to the mechanic as well as the farmer, sportsman, hobbyist, and putterer. Oh no. Is that what we are, guys? Are we putterers? <laughs> oh my. 
how it works. Alright, let's see. What have we got here? A five minute course in the newly discovered art of precision wire forming, or how to save yourself a flock of time and money. What the heck did they mean by that? Is this some sort of 1950s almost swearing uh, <laughs> terminology? Why would they put that on the packaging? It must have had some other meaning back then. Alright, so there's the five minute course. I don't even have any pegboard in my shop. I guess I'm going to have to put up some pegboard just so I can hang things with homemade hooks. Alright, well that's taken longer than I ex expected. Alright, and I have one more thing to show. The piece de resistance, at least I think. It's not cleaned up, but... Look at that. Atkins, the 500 stainless steel. Unexcelled in material, workmanship, durability, and damaskine finish. So the way they put a a polish on it <clears throat> is reminiscent of a Damascus blade, but then look at the handle. Clear acrylic plastic. Unfortunately, it has a little damage up here. I'm gonna have to stabilize that at least and try to seal it up with another bit of clear plastic. But it's mostly there, and as a wall hanger, you won't even notice that. The screws here are not stainless steel. <laughs> they rusted, but I can take that off and clean those and clean this up. It's, it's called the 500, and it was made in Indianapolis, Indiana, so I'm assuming it's in reference to the Indianapolis 500. So pretty awesome. I know it's got a little damage to it, but it was only five bucks, and it's like, I've never seen anything like that. It's going to be a nice wall hanger for sure, and uh, I could technically use it because the teeth are still perfectly sharp. Let me know what you think was the coolest item and all that jazz. Have a good weekend. Bye.